Hey there friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Liz, my company is Hello from Liz Matthews and I'm excited to spend some time with you today. This is Floss Tube episode 90 and I have got a stack of whips to share with you. Some happy mail, some plans, some finds and generally all things cross stitch. I hope that you um, have been well and that you are excited to chat with me today. I appreciate you spending time here with me and as always, I am gonna list everything I mentioned in this video chronologically in the description box below so you can drop that box down and see everything listed there. No need to stop your stitching. I would not want to do that. Um, I hope that you have been really good in these last two weeks. I didn't intend to be away for two weeks but I think at this point you guys understand how flexible my schedule needs to be. I ended up staying at dad's in West Virginia a little longer than planned and that was not for any medical reason. It's because of snow. Yes, there was some snow and some ice over the mountain range that I have to drive through over really to get home. And I was not about to be like white knuckling it over the mountains and terrified to slide when I could just stay at dad's one more day and get some more stitching in. So that is in fact what I did. And because I was at dad's, I have quite a variety of items to share with you today. And one stitch that I have been diligently working on that I can't show you yet. In next week's video, I will be able to, but I'll tell you as much as I can about it. So uh, I do have one finished object. I guess it's I, is it a finished object? It's not an FFO because I just finished the stitching and let me go ahead and show it to you. I'm not going to tease you about that. I brought my board so I will just go ahead and show you. This is sun soaked and you all knew that I was going to bring it to my dad's to work on and in fact I did and I got the border finished up. This was the perfect thing to bring with me because it was just filling in the white edges and kind of mindless and really easy to do when I was tired in the evenings, but I love how it turned out. So this is sun soaked and this was previously released in my membership and it will be coming to the general market in June. So I really needed to get this finished and I do have FFO plans for this. It will be finished as a pin cushion. So you can look for that coming in the next month or two. How in the world are we talking June already? I don't get it. I don't get it. But alas, here we are and I really, really love how this turned out. I will of course share more details with you about this when it is a general release but yes a finish under my belt i can now move forward with ffling which is always fun sometimes tends to linger for me but in this case i need to get it done so this is one finish i had over the past two weeks because i knew i was going to be at dad's for at least most of a week i did try to bring a variety of projects to work on so i ended up bringing four and i know in my last video i told you i didn't know what four they were going to be and i don't think any of these will be super surprising to you and there are no new starts but i'm going to just go through this pile and show you the progress i've made on the four whips that i brought to dad's next up we have my um, my little friendship piece that I did to commemorate my girls trip with Annie. This, let me get this all set up. This is one of the designs from the Prairie Schooler Friends book number 84. This is a collection of five different patterns and I chose to do an excerpt from this bottom right pattern, the ladies under the umbrella. You can see it here. So I am doing a portion of that to turn into an ornament to commemorate an overnight trip with my friend Annie. She's on Instagram, XO Needle in the Hay XO. And this is as far as I've gotten. I did make some good progress in the last two weeks. You can see the sun is now added and I've put the flowers in around the circle. What's the best way to do this? I made this board so long ago, but I've not actually used it that much. There you go. This is the progress I've made. 
And as I told you earlier, I am doing a few adaptations to this piece. I chose quite a few of my own colors, which is very atypical of me for a prairie schooler design. I like to stay very true to the design, but in this case, I just, I want a little rogue. And then I'm also going to be switching the ladies' dresses to be um, either favorite colors or what we most likely wear. And then I will be personalizing each lady's um, skin tone and hair to identically represent me and Annie. So again, this is from the Friends book, Prairie Schooler. There are two Friends patterns. Um, ooh, just got super windy out there. Uh, sorry about that if you hear it. There are two Friends patterns by Prairie Schooler. I think it's Friends and Friends 2. And they both have five designs that are really, really great if you're wanting to do kind of a friend stitch or something commemorative. Now, two colors that I didn't change are the colors for the sun. And um, can you tell that there's a face in there? I just don't know. I'm not sure. Wow, okay. On camera, you can see the face so much more than when I look at it with my naked eye. Okay, well, maybe. <laughs> maybe I should bite my tongue and leave the colors alone. I was going to suggest if you decide to stitch this, maybe go with slightly more contrasted gold shades, but in the camera, you can actually see it. And that sun is probably my most favorite part of this whole piece. So I was a little like, oh, bummer when I stitched it, but seeing it in the camera really, um, really helps. So that is something that I do plan on making more progress on um, as soon as I can. I have done a lot of stitching and need to continue to do a lot of stitching for the April pattern of the month for my membership that's about to come out on the 15th. I always schedule my exclusive patterns to come out on the 15th just to kind of um, spread out the love of new designs throughout the month from any other designers who may have a Patreon. I don't wanna overwhelm everybody. So the 15th has been working really well and I had high, high hopes of getting the new design model stitched before the 15th, but uh, maybe that was a long shot to start with, but life has been so busy. Um, Joe has an ear infection, like I've had appointments, car shopping, little. Um, so a lot of things have come up that have keep, that have kept me from stitching as much as I'd like, but I have been working on it and in next week's video, I will get to share with you as far as I've gotten. But for now, I just wanna share with you the palette of threads. These are all DMC that I am using in this about to be released yet unnamed piece. I wanna make sure that the members get to see it for the first time, um, get to see it first, but next week I will have more information on for <laughs> Next week, I will have more information for you. You know what I'm trying to say, right? I think I just got very distracted and lost my words over this color palette. So I don't know that I have ever designed a piece with so many colors. I haven't fully counted. I think this is 19 or 20 DMC shades. And that's a lot for me, but this piece, it just really called for it. And they are so very beautiful. And I need to do like a rainbow layout and snap some pics because they're really fun. And I can't wait for you and the members to see this piece. It's been a joy to stitch. And I'm sorry I'm telling you so much about it without actually showing you the piece, but sit tight for one more week and all will be revealed. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that I have been stitching like crazy, in fact, even if I can't share it with you. Okay, two Christmas themed pieces that I did get some work in on, um, work work on that i did get to work on over the last few weeks one is the dimension style that i am going to save for last because i do have a new set of instructions for you and the other piece lives in this bag this is a creative country girl tammy blaylock bag that i 
just love oh my gosh all of that vintage ephemera is so right up my alley and in this i have a dimensions kit that i brought to my dad's i find them very hard to stitch at dad's i think it's because i need to spread out so much to work on a dimensions piece that it can be a little tricky when i don't have the space so although not much progress got made on this i did put some stitches in on can we call this my most favorite dimensions kit possibly it is christmas cove it is out of print you can find it occasionally on ebay if you're willing to pay i feel like i got like the deal of the century with this but it does pop up occasionally why they don't reprint it i don't know because look at this isn't that so wintry wonderful i just love it i envision this as a little european fishing village with santa and um i think it's so beautiful now i did start in the bottom right corner which is probably the most boring place to start ever check it out it's like straight cobblestones and i'm over the cobblestones to be honest they're not fun anymore so i am kind of meandering places to get to something more fun so let me pull this out for you and get this situated on my display board there it is um, it's a wrinkly mess. I am stitching this in hand. I swapped the included Ada, 16 count Ada, for 18 count Fox and Rabbit Ocean Air fabric. It's a perfect color substitution. I put that on the wrong side. Um, and it works really well anytime you need to substitute Dimensions Ada. This is as far as I've gotten. You can see I have remained in like cobblestone land and it's getting old and I'm getting over it. So um, it's been very interesting to pull this out and to find myself for the first time really frustrated with how slow the progress is. I traditionally really love how things slowly come together and then suddenly you have an item or a scene or it just it comes together before you know it this is it's not happening with this so I was a little disheartened to feel slight frustration over this I was like more cobblestones eye roll um, and maybe it's because I started in the wrong place but I love the finished piece and I do love the slow and steady approach but it would just nice it would be nice to feel a bit of a reward i don't know my plan with this is to continue upward to do that really big christmas tree and get to a place where i can space out the cobblestone he double hockey sticks yeah so this again is dimensions christmas cove and this is what it will look like in a billion years. And despite having a couple complaints about this style of stitching, I have to say, I truly, truly love it. Still, I like collecting the patterns. I like working on the patterns. And you know, you don't always love everything consistently that you're working on and that might just be the case with this piece um luckily there's a few other pieces that i can switch my attention to to spread it out a little bit so i worked on okay those are the whips that i worked on because the only thing i have left is the dimensions whip which i'm gonna save as i said but for now i have a couple finds for you that i wanted to share this these were both inspired by Annie and our overnight getaway that included a lot of stitching. She introduced me to a tool that I ordered and whilst browsing the Clover brand website on Amazon, um, I found another tool that I got. So I haven't used either of these yet to be honest, but I just think they're going to be so useful. This is a Clover point turner. Check that out. 
So when I make some of my pin cushions or pillows or do any fancy finishing, I'm often looking for something to stick in the corners to pop it out and to get it nice and crisp. And I think this will be a really great tool. But this is the item that Annie showed me that inspired this whole purchase. And this is a curved tailor's awl. And I'm gonna take it out for you. It's my first time looking at this. Uh, mine specifically, I've seen Annie's. And I wondered what she would use it for. And she said, it's really great for when you need to frog. So check this out. See that sharp point on the end? You can really get under your stitches and lift them when you need to frog and take your stitches back out. It's nice and sharp without being dangerous. And I just think it's gonna be a really, really useful tool to put in my little sewing notion bag. So that's going directly in there. Annie, thank you for the great find. I got these both on Amazon and I will put them in my Amazon shop, which is linked in the description box below. This has a really nice weight to it. It's I'm impressed by the quality, which seems very odd to say for such a random little tool. So I am adding that to my cross stitch stash along with the point turner yet to be used. I will give you a report on that. Along with that purchase, you all know that I got the extender bar from Lindy Stitches for my Lowry stand which now just lives like it's look it's right there i'm looking right at it and it has my dad's stocking on it and i just can't wait to get back to it when i don't know but it is just perfection anyway in the delivery with my lowry extender bar uh steph and jason were so kind and they sent along steph's lindy stitches designs of wizard cat i love the sentiment on this it's your sadness will pass my friend and I know Steph was inspired by another artist when designing this piece. And all of the information is on the back. The original artwork was by Hannah Detterbeck. And I remember Steph talking about this in her new release video. And I think this is so, so sweet. I love the uh, solidness. That's the word I'm looking for of the color. And if you need a fill in project, my goodness, this would be perfect for on the go stitching. But not only did they send me this pattern, they also sent the cutest Cosmo thread pack to go with it. I am very, very excited about this because Lindy Stitches is now stocking Cosmo thread along with stinky dyes, silk, I think. But look at the packaging. This is the thread to go with this piece. And can you see that there is a piece of tape that coordinates? I think that is a genius. And um, I have never used Cosmo thread before, but I'm hearing more and more about it lately. It's a cotton thread. Uh, I can't speak on it too, too much because I don't know much, but it is embroidery, six stranded, 100% cotton thread made in Japan. And I have kind of been curious about it. Anytime you can add a new thread into your arsenal of available fibers, it's a really great thing. So I am really, really excited to give this a try and I just appreciate their kindness so much. Um, you can get the Cosmo threads, like I said, the dinky dyes and so much more. I think they're even having a thread sale this weekend on Weeks Dye Works, I think, I think. Um, Cause Weeks Dye Works came out with some new colors that are really good. The green, really, really good. And the red is beautiful. Go check out their website. You'll get more information and proper information as opposed to what I am trying to remember to tell you now. And then what else did I bring with me? I have some happy mail. We're gonna open this together. I don't know how I found the patience to not get into this happy mail package before filming this video but somehow i did so we're going to open this together i know what this is and it's something i mentioned in a previous video maybe even my last video mm, something i wanted to tell you let's put the knife down in my last video i was talking about project bags and how i want to learn to make them 
and how I was going to do that through uh, a make with me tutorial kind of event that Carrie of Tiger Lily is hosting. And I wanted to let you know that as of Carrie's video yesterday, there were a few more spots available for you to get the kit to learn how to make project bags along with her. I am going to link her video below as well as her website. Again, the information's not fresh in my mind and I don't want to tell you the wrong thing, but there are still a couple available if you would like to join me. I'm super excited to learn how to make project bags. But until then, why not just buy project bags, right? Right. So this is something that I purchased from Rika of House of Stitch and Stash. She is a project bag maker and my dad's santa stocking no my dad's stocking no santa my dad's stocking lives in a house of stitch and stash bag that i really really like you can fit a lot in it and i saw that rika posted these bags for sale there were a couple extra ones from her club and this yes yes this is a bag let me get it out packaging like top notch thank you Rika this is beautiful and safe ah. <laughs> oh I'm so excited about this I mentioned <laughs> I mentioned wanting to hopefully get an extra from her club in one of my previous videos and that is exactly what this is oh this is so pretty um this is a fabric for which I have like a yard of it. I ordered a yard of this fabric. But what are the chances that I would ever know how to make a bag of this quality? Mm, slim to none. So I hopped on the opportunity and I just ordered a finished bag. So this is quite large as you can see. It has a handle, which I love. A handle is like such a nice addition to a bag and look at this print I love it so it has a vinyl front it has her little tag and look at the stork scissors behind or that complement I should say oh, this is really really good oh yeah I'm so happy I bought this so yay, some happy mail. I um I have never been in need of project bags so much as I am right now with all of these starts, and I'm really, really excited about it. I have started to transfer everything from those like gridded mesh bags into proper project bags. And maybe I need to spend some dedicated time doing that and film it perhaps because they make me really darn happy. I have a feeling I'm preaching to the choir and that you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, oh, so good, so good. Rika, I love it. Thank you for making that extra available. And oh, I'm so glad I didn't miss it. That's some happy meal. Okay, I have just one more thing to chat with you about. And that is the Dimensions Sal, the coffee shop Sal. So if you are not stitching along and don't care to um, spend any more time hearing about this, no worries, I'll see you in the next video. If you are participating, let's talk coffee shop. So for those of you who don't know, I am hosting a Sal for the Dimensions Gold Collection Petite Pattern Coffee Shop. This is what it looks like. You can get it on Amazon, you can get it at your locals, and it's just a really fun, small version of the Dimensions kits that I like to stitch so much. And every two weeks, I will be giving a new set of instructions, yes, in this case, it's three weeks, and I do sincerely apologize about that. I hope to do better, um, but for our next assignment, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I did, there you go, can you spot it? It's the greenery. So it's the greenery of the wreath. There's two little spots of greenery on the sled. One is a tree and one's just kind of like a, a gathering, a bundle of greenery. And then one is the wreath on the yet to be stitched 
blue door. So I chose to do these four little areas because they're gonna use the same thread and you can uh, just be very efficient when stitching in those four areas using the same thread and you don't have to, I don't know, end your threads at odd places. So let me give you another look at where I am instructing us to get to this time. They were really fun areas to do, laborious and possibly the, um, it took the most time of any section that I have assigned so far, just as a heads up, but really, really fun. And I think the piece is really coming to life now. So again, it's the wreath, the greenery in these two sections and the wreath on the other door. So that is it. I don't think I have too much to say or pointers or tips or thoughts on this. Um, it was slightly annoying to figure out exactly where to start this wreath. Time consuming, I should say. I feel like I'm using the word annoying a lot in this video. And that's not at all what I meant time consuming because I checked and rechecked triple checked myself before I stitched but it was really fun to put that in along with the other areas of green so that is what I am asking you to work on if you'd like to keep up with me by all means if you want to just keep on going please do I do too I really do but it's been fun to pace myself and to share the love of dimensions in a very like bit by bit bite size portions with you. So that is what I would like you to stitch in the next two weeks. I of course am going to move forward with my next section. I believe I already know what it is and I will be back with you in two weeks to chat with you about what is forthcoming. So one more look, festive greenery. There you go. With that, I'm gonna let you go. Enjoy your weekend. I appreciate you being here so very much. I hope that you've been well, and I will chat with you in my next video. Bye.